seen you on the trail, I was like, that was Nina Turner. That was awesome. And it, it is it was fun, too, because like you said, when you're on the trail, you kind of run across various people. Um, and and um, like some people you like, some people you like less. <laughs> That's right. That's true. And it's all good. But you and your team especially were always courteous. You know, that was my experience. And there are a lot of people in a Bernie world or in the revolution who absolutely ab admire you and, and the work that you have done and what you are doing. And I'm certainly one of those people. Oh, thank you, Nina. That means so much to me because I was a burner in 2016. I still get the text to prove it. I was getting texts on the regular, which is <laughs> like, I'm, you know, I'm just wanted like, um, you know, one, one of uh, Bernie's donors. Um, uh, and I got to say, um, when we were on the trail, uh, I didn't know if Bernie liked me and it was I was very nervous about it. But then he said to an interviewer, it's like, oh, I like Andrew Yang. And I was like, really? He likes me? I was like so happy. Um, and, and so hanging out with him, I saw Jane on the trail, too. Um, and, and I was so thrilled that it, it seemed like they knew where I was coming from and that um, we, we were tackling some of the same problems from slightly different angles or perspectives. But it, it really was, in my mind, always super aligned. And when folks said to me, like, hey, I'm for Bernie or whatever, it's like, yeah, I was for Bernie last time, too. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's right. No, I, I've definitely heard the senator uh, mention you in, in the fondest of ways. And, you know, he's not a he's not a touchy feely kind of guy. So when he says he likes somebody. You can take that to the to the bank. Believe him when he says that. So yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, I I, I believed it. It, it really like I, I felt elevated in that moment. And then when I saw him next too, like I I felt the same. You're in Cleveland right now, um, which is the area you grew up in. You kind of rose through the political ranks. You're a city council person. You're a state legislator, um, uh, and then you hit the national stage in 2016. Uh, on Bernie's first run, it, it didn't take long for you to uh, to get launched into the national uh, spotlight. Uh, during the 2016 Bernie Sanders won uh, Revolution Part One, uh, so, so you wound up playing a a pretty big part in that race. Uh, I I would love to hear from your perspective because at that time Andrew Yang was. Uh, just clicking on uh, the TV like everyone else and like watching and you know um, but you were getting a uh, you know a participant's perspective on the 2016 race uh, when did you realize uh, just how well Bernie was going to perform in 2016 and that he was going to contend I would have to say for all of the traveling that I did the pulse on the ground, it was palpable. And I'm sure you kind of picked that up from watching it on TV. But I mean, when I tell you absolutely palpable, that was my first sign that, oh my God, the people that were coming across at these rallies across the country are really feeling something. And I'm using the word feel deliberately. It, it, it wasn't in their head. It was really in their heart. And they latched on to Senator Bernie Sanders in the same for the same reason why I did, which is his authenticity, his transparency, uh, the fact that he was not afraid to make the argument, to make the case that government and the leaders of this government, particularly on the federal level, have failed the poor, the working poor and the very middle class in this country. He had that kind of conversation saying to the American people, you deserve better than what you are getting. And I'll tell you, Andrew, the thing that really attracted me to the center, you talk about being a little selfish here. For me, maybe it was selfish as well. You know, Growing up as the oldest of seven children and having my mother die really young. My mother died when she was 42 years old. And I was in my 20s when she died and all of my siblings. So I'm in my 20s and we're all two years apart. My baby sister was 12 and I didn't quite know. I didn't know what the hell I was going to do it was not my, my family's very working was working poor. And I was at a community college, the very community college that I ended up having a tenure track professorship at. But I was a student there and thinking, my God, how am I going to go on? Because my mother had no money. She had no life insurance yeah. policy. And she had absolutely nothing. I did not know how I was going to go on. But I really used that pain to catapult me. And so I graduated from that community college. I matriculated to a four-year university. I earned two degrees there. And then I started to dabble into a PhD before politics kind of kind of got me. But I say that to say what, what, what most drew me to 
the senator was his righteous indignation. And, and two topics really hit home for me. One was Medicare for all, which I'm sure that doesn't come as any surprise to you. And the second was uh, higher education to, to make to make sure that that people that mothers and fathers and, and custodial parents, you name it, college for all because I'm a first generation college graduate and I know how important that was to help me. I mean, it was it didn't solve all of my problems, but it definitely helped me to be able to lift my family out of poverty. And then when my son became a second generation college graduate, that meant more to me than even the degrees that I have right now, Andrew. So those were the That's two beautiful. two things that really drew me to the senator. So in 2016, even though the media didn't quite get it, if you were on the ground with us, you felt it. I vividly remember watching a Bernie Sanders speech relatively early in that race. And I agreed with every word he said. I was like, this guy just spoke the absolute truth. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, like, I was like, we need more of this. Like, this is what we need. Um, and, and then you had on the other side, Hillary Clinton, um, who I, I'd say I, I was, I was fine with, but I didn't have that much enthusiasm for. Uh, and so for me, it was a relatively straightforward. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to um, support Bernie. And then the, the fact, of course, you know, Andrew Yang's support was, you know, like not that significant a thing in, in 16. Um, and then uh, and, and then his mistreatment at the hands of the media and the DNC just like uh, like um, made me even more fired up. Uh, where you talk about it's like, well, the media didn't get it or whatnot. It seemed pretty clear to me that the media was trying to uh, minimize the level of Bernie Sanders support where a lot of the coverage was like, and he can't win. And like that, this person, you, you know, it's like, well, this is interesting. It's like, oh, surprising how many people are for this guy. And I was like, have you actually heard the guy speak? And it seemed very clear, um, certainly after the fact, even that the DNC kneecapped him and did him dirty. Uh, you know, that I, I think... On the merits, um, if Bernie had been just allowed to compete freely against Hillary Clinton, I think there's a great chance he would have won that race. The media wasn't trying to put its thumb on the scale um, uh, against him. If the DNC rules and the superdelegates weren't against him, I think there's a great chance he would have been the nominee in 16. And I think if he'd been the nominee, he would have beaten Trump. Well, you know I agree with that. Amen. Is what, amen to everything that you said. And it really stoked for the... Bernie Kratz, people who believed in the senator from the beginning, resentment with the DNC, and you saw that play out, and you still see remnants of that. I think the party has a long way to go to heal, and to heal, you have to admit when you are wrong, and I, that still has not happened, but I totally agree with you. We would be talking to President Bernard Sanders right now instead of uh, oh, having to deal wow. with the, instead of having to deal with the I terror mean, that we have right now. Uh, and, and I agree with you. There's never really a reckoning in the DNC where there's never like a mea culpa, like, wow, we uh, screwed that one up uh, on an epic scale. Um, though there was massive turnover at the DNC where when, when people are mad at the DNC, and you probably know this, you go there, like, it's probably like none of the same people <laughs> anymore. But none of them were our people either. So it was just, I think they just replaced people with the same types of people. Neoliberal. Yeah, you would know better than I do on that side. But I'm a like, member of the DNC to too, by the way. Yang, I am a member of the DNC from the great state of Ohio, even though some people might not necessarily know that because I definitely am critical of the DNC because I do understand what many of them don't understand is that what drew people to Senator Sanders was not an affinity for a party. It was what he was standing for. And if the Democratic Party wants to have a bigger tent and have the ability to win offices from the local level all the way up to the federal level, they have to recognize that that new majority that it will take for Democrats to win are not necessarily all diehards. They, are, they believe in a value proposition and not necessarily loyalty to a party. And especially young people, Yang, I'm sure you saw that and heard that on the trail. Yeah, I, I appreciate the folks who've been... Uh... Um, doing the work in uh, local democratic circles and, and party politics for a long time. But I also think there should be an openness to um, where the people are, 
heading. And so it seems like there's been a kind of preconception in a number of cycles. It's like, well, of course it's going to be Hillary. Of course it's going to be this. And it's like, well, no one's voted yet. You want to see what the what the people think? Isn't that what we're all about? Uh, and certainly that played out very, very forcefully in 2016. Thank you for listening in. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you did, please do subscribe to Yang Speaks and click on notifications so we can let you know every time we have a new episode.